see that it's a lie Cause we always give it one last try Yeah, you've watched me break a thousand times Now I'm all alone Cause you never show You say you will But then you don't That's how it goes Don't wanna know I'm turning off my mind so I get by I just wanna be happy Well, ladies and gents, let me tell you, it doesn't get much better than that. A beautiful fish, cracking barbel, caught on the mighty River Trent on the best method there is out there, stick float. A fantastic method, obviously really forgotten, but I tell you what, if you asked a lot of anglers, something that they'd love to do is have a day stick float fishing, and if you can catch fish like that, why not? Obviously, fishing for barbel, you need slightly stepped up gear. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this fish back. Obviously, it takes a little bit of time resting barbel. You want to make sure that they go back really well rested. So I'm not using a keep net for these fish today. Might put a few smaller fish in some keep nets. But for the barbel, what I'm going to do is just really take my time. And after, after I've caught the fish, put it straight back, but rest it in the edge. Make sure it's really strong before it kicks away. That's really important. So I'm going to put this fish back, and then I'll talk to you about the kit and the approach I'm using today. Before we run through the setup and the approach today, let me just talk to you about the venue itself. The mighty River Trent, it's absolutely ran with fish at the minute throughout the whole length. This barbel, chub, bream, roach, dace, you name it. There's even guys catching catfish that have kept quite quiet along the whole stretch of this river. So you can just see it's stuffed with fish at the minute. This particular stretch is run by the Knott's Piscatorials. It's a brilliant little stretch of river. And they've got so much water in this area that, you know, it's well worth joining if you're, if you're a local. Now, I've come today to target barbel. I love catching barbel. I think they're an absolutely amazing fish. And to do it on stick float gear is, you know, is a dream come true. So. Let me just talk to you about the pegs that you need to be looking for, or I think you need to be looking for when you're targeting barbel. For me, they like a bit of pace, a bit of well oxygenated water, fast flowing water, and that usually coincides with either rocks or gravelly riverbeds. So you're looking for somewhere that's got some nice gravel, 
rocks, something where those barbels can sort of like dig in, find little grubs and their natural sort of food source. They don't really like silty riverbeds or sort of like muddy riverbeds. For me, gravel, rocks, that's what you need to be looking for for barbel. So the peg I'm on today, nice sandy bottom, but obviously shelves away into gravel. I'm probably fishing about five foot deep and really, it's so easy to fish this peg today because I've got a 14 foot rod and straight off the rod tip, I've got that five foot of depth, which I think is about right, just to give those fish a little bit of confidence. Obviously, if it was a little bit shallower than that, I just don't think those fish would feed confidently. But because it's five foot deep, there's enough water over the fish's heads, they don't feel pressurized and I can catch them pretty easily. Gear wise, I'm using a stepped up version of probably what I'd use for roach or dace or chublets on the river. So the first thing and the most important thing when you stick float fishing is a longer than usual rod. So I'm using a 14 foot rod today. This is Reactor Core, it's the XZ Ultra Control. It's actually named a waggler rod, but it's perfect for this, this game because it's got a nice through action when you hook a fish, which means those big fish, when they go on a mad lunge or a mad run, you've still got loads of control over them and you can use relatively fine gear and get away with it because the rod absorbs all those lunges of those powerful fish. Now, line on the reel. Now, I would love to be using something like three pound, 012 millimeter line on the reel, but I just know that if I hook a big barbell and he decides to have a, have a bit of a play with me, he's gonna win the game. So, I've gone for four pound on the reel, that's M-Tech. I've treated it with a bit of line spray as well, just to make it a bit easier to control. Obviously, when you stick float fishing, you want the line to lay on top of the water. You don't want it sinking up below the water. Let's talk about the float itself. Top and bottom stick float. Obviously it's important, use free rubbers on the stick float. This is an alloy stem stick float, dome top on it. And I just think an alloy stem stick float gives you an, the best of all worlds really, shotting wise. Now, the standard way of shotting a stick float is to fish a sh shirt button style shotting pattern, spread your shot out throughout the rig, get a nice slow fall of the bait. I'm fishing for barbel today, or I'm targeting barbel, and that means I wanna get my bait down quite quickly. There's a lot of small fish in the river, little chublets, little roach, and I wanna get my bait through those fish and actually working in the bottom sort of like foot of water. So I've used the bulk on the rig. I've got a bulk of number four slot shot, and then I've got four droppers that I've actually pinched them together, and they are number eights, so I've got a pair of number eights and a pair of number eights. The last pair of number eights sits just above a tiny little diamond eye swivel. And that swivel just means that when I'm really in and out constantly throughout the day, because this is quite a busy method, you're in and out all the time, I'm just not gonna get as many spin ups on the hook length. And it means I'll just be fishing for a lot longer rather than untangling my hook length every time. The hook length, I'm actually using one of the hook lengths that I use for carp fishing. It's 014 and I've got a size 16 hook. Barbless hook, I'm not too fussed about using a barbed hook really, especially when I'm keeping nice direct con control over the fish, nice soft rod. A barbless hook just means that when I'm using a, a bait like maggots as I am today, I'm not bursting the bait with a big barb on it, so it makes the bait look a little bit more natural. So there we go, a stepped up setup compared to what I'd use for smaller fish, but obviously as you can see today, it's working perfectly. Well, folks, I don't know what this is, but it's not a barbel. Nice perch. It's definitely worth putting the net under that fella. Probably about 10 ounce, 12 ounce. Cracking fish. I think what we'll do is we'll just talk through the basics of stick float fishing. So I'll bait up again. Just putting two maggots on. I just want to get a, get a few bites. For me, when I'm stick float fishing, what I like to do is make sure everything's performed downstream of where I'm sitting. So we've got quite a tough wind today. We want to control the rig as soon as possible. And by casting downstream and feeding downstream and doing everything downstream means I can control the rig because I've got the flow to work with. I can pull the float back and the flow straightens everything out straightens my line out, make sure the float's going down as straight as possible down the, down the swim. So what we're gonna do, 
Got a bit of line around the back of the spool there. Let's pull that out. Okay. What we're going to do is just have a cast. Hook bait landed in front of the float at all times. We're going to check the rig, just pull it back, straighten everything out, feed some bait. I'm not being shy with the bait today. Ease the float down on a tight line. Oh, bite straight away then. And just as that float settles, that's when you tend to get your bites. So it's all about getting the rig to go in in a nice straight line. Just checking the rig, making sure everything's going down straight. We want the hook bait to be landing, in, hook bait to be traveling down the river in front of the float. So the hook bait is almost pulling the float down the river. There's a load of little fish in the river at the minute. So maggots probably aren't the best way of avoiding those fish, but we'll see if we can get through to something a little bit better. So straighten the float out. Pull the float back, straighten everything out, then let the float go. And what you'll find is there'll be an area where you just get bites. That's the killing zone, just there. Nice fish, cracking roach. If I was in a match, I'd be happy with that. So even though I'm feeding sort of a meter downstream of my fishing position, I'm getting a lot of bites maybe six or seven meters downstream. And obviously that's because that's where that loose feed's landing. And that's where those fish are feeling happiest. So I'm making sure that I'm presenting my rig in that killing zone for as long as possible. So we're just straightening it out then with the bail arm open, just controlling the line with my finger on the spool, just easing the rig down to that area. This wind is terrible. One of the reasons that we're using is a slightly heavier, a slightly heavier float is because it's all a balancing act. And because we're hopefully going to latch into a few bigger fish, we've got that heavier main line, which means we need the heavier float to sort of boss that main line. Hopefully you can see that I'm not being shy with the bait at all. I've got with me as many tins of hemp that I could carry. The fish in the River Trent absolutely love hemp. And obviously tins are so convenient. So I've got probably six or seven big tins of hemp. Barb will love hemp, we all know that. So it's a great bait to feed. I was also on a bream match yesterday and what I said to the lads around me is that if anyone's got any spare casters, chuck them my way. So I've got some casters that look horrendous. Obviously, they've been out in the sun all day yesterday. I've not bothered putting them in the fridge last night. I've not really looked after them that, <laughs> that great, to be honest. And uh, they look horrendous. But they all sink, which is important. There you go. Nice fish, that is. They all sink and really when you're barbell fishing or fishing for big fish on the river I think it's quantity rather than quality is the way we ought to go. Another nice perch and I expect to feed the lot so I've got sort of like four pints of casters, all that hemp and I want to get through the lot of it, really. You know, there's, there's, there's an unlimited amount of fish in front of us here. We could attract fish from all the way downstream. We, we can't feed enough bait, put it that way. Hook bait wise, there's a tackle shop five minutes away. So it's, it's ideal just to pop in on the way. And I've grabbed a pint of mixed maggots, some whites and some reds. I've got yellow all over my hands because they chucked in a little bit of turmeric for me. Turmeric just degreases the maggots if you ever want to feed them in flask foam water and also adds just a, a nice tinge of yellow to the white maggots. So I've got part of those for hook baits. And I've also got 
a tin of corn, maybe to try later on. If I'm getting pestered by these little fish and I just want to stick it out maybe for a barber or a bigger fish, I've got a tin of corn because I think trundling a grain of corn down the peg could work really well. And I've caught loads of barb along corn on the river, so I think a, a grain of corn trundled down could work really well. But as it is, I'm quite enjoying myself catching these, <laughs> catching these perch. <laughs> Well, what a day's fishing that has been. Barbel on the stick float, does it get any better than that? And I've probably had 10 or 12 pound of accidents, really. Big perch, loads of little, sort of like four, six, eight ounce perch, some dace, roach, little chublets, even the old gudgeon. Brilliant to catch a couple of gudgeon. I've loved today. If you like this sort of thing, there's another video there, feeder fishing on the river. Why not give that a watch? And until next time, tight lines.